Hi everyone, this is meant to be a self quiz. Uh, so what I want you to do is, um, uh, after I explain the question, I want you to pause the video and then try to work it entirely on your own. And then I'll go over the answers. So the question I wanna ask is uh, for you to determine the intramolecular forces present in pure samples of each of the following. NH3, ammonia, NF3, CH4, H2CO. I will remind you as a hint, um, the very first thing you have to do is draw a Lewis dot structure for each of the substances. Uh, so before you do anything else, you're gonna need to draw Lewis dot structures. So go ahead and pause the video right now and then restart it um, to hear the answer. All right, so for the first substance, ammonia, NH3, uh, we know that there are, generally speaking, three uh, forces that we're gonna be looking for in pure substances. Those are gonna be London dispersion. And remember, all molecules are gonna exhibit London dispersion forces to one degree or another because those are due to the fact that the molecules have electrons and they induce these temporary dipoles. We're looking for dipole-dipole forces, which will be present in molecule, between molecules that have a permanent dipole and we're looking for hydrogen bonding. And remember, for hydrogen bonding, we're looking for a bridge where hydrogen is covalently bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, and it's attracted on a neighboring molecule to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, All right? So those are the three that we're looking for in each of our substances, okay? Lunar dispersion, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding. Ammonia, off the bat, um, is going to have um, it, it, and I should have done these in the reverse order probably because um, hydrogen bonding is usually the most important, but you know we've gone over some examples where that's not always the case, but um, it's the first one I always look for. So NH3 has H's, it has N's. When you draw the Lewis structure, it's going to be pyramidal like this. And so we could have a situation where here's a neighboring ammonia, and now we have the magic N to H to N bridge that we're always looking for, H in between a nitrogen and a nitrogen. So that's going to be hydro, uh, this, this substance is going to exhibit hydrogen bonding. Okay, so hydrogen bonding is one of them. I drew my D backwards. Hydrogen <laughs> bonding. All right, all molecules exhibit London dispersion forces, no matter what. All right, um, because again, all molecules have electrons. Um, this molecule has a permanent dipole moment, and so it would also, you, there's always an argument here of whether do you say it has dipole-dipole, or is dipole-dipole counted in the hydrogen bonding? In my opinion, they're slightly different. I would not count you off if you did not include dipole-dipole, but I would also give you credit if you did in this one case. Now, a case where there's not this distinction is in NF3. So NF3 is the exact same shape. Um, as ammonia. It is still pyramidal. All right. And remember, if you need to go back um, and look at these, you do need to have, um, you do need to be able to draw the Lewis structure and produce the shape uh, pr pretty easily and quickly. Um, so if that's something you need to review, you should go back and do that. So if you have, uh, remember this would, uh, the fluorines are more electronegative than the nitrogen, so the dipole points this way. So you have a small negative here and a small positive here. And a neighboring NF3, I'm not gonna draw all the dots, but a neighboring NF3 would have a small positive and a small negative. And so here, in between them, you would have a positive and a negative attracting. And we know from Coulomb's law that negative and positive charges attract one another. So that's gonna be the origin of dipole-dipole forces in this compound. Again, all molecules have lunar dispersion forces. There will be no hydrogen bonding here because there's no hydrogen present in this compound, so we don't have to worry. We don't even have to look for it. All right, CH4 uh, is going to be tetrahedral. And remember that tetrahedral molecules, if all the atoms on the outside are the same atom, then uh, that molecule will be nonpolar, so there's no dipole here. There's no permanent dipole here. So, um, 
while it will exhibit London dispersion forces, because all molecules have London dispersion forces, it will not have dipole-dipole forces because there's no permanent dipole present um, in tetrahedral shape. Also, there's no hydrogen bonding here because remember, it has to have a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. There's no nitrogen, there's no oxygen, there's no fluorine. This can't hydrogen bond. And if you recall, this is CH4 and NH3 is one of the examples we used in class to talk about hydrogen bonding because NH3 ought to be similar in boiling point to CH4, but in fact, its boiling point is much higher, which we attribute to the presence of hydrogen bonding. Okay, H2CO, um, when you draw it, it is um, trigonal planar. You should have gotten this for the... Um, for the Lewis structure. <clears throat> Remember that when we write it like this, we write H2CO, what we're, we're trying to hint at the shape, that there's two H's attached to the C and then the O's over here, all right? So um, this is a symmetric shape, it's trigonal planar, but um, the atoms around the outside are not the same. So we in fact do observe a dipole on this molecule. So you would have a little negative over here and a little positive over here because the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen. Um, and so uh, this one will, again, have lunar dispersion forces. It will exhibit dipole-dipole, uh, all right? It's tricky, but this one does not have, um, this one does not exhibit hydrogen bonding. Both of the hydrogens are covalently bonded to a carbon. So there's no way to have a hydrogen in between an oxygen and, and another oxygen. So even if you draw neighboring molecules, Notice here that um, you have an A, you have an O, and you have an H, but you have a C on this other side. So there's no way to get that um, get an O on both sides of the hydrogen in order to form the hydrogen bond. All right. I hope this um, problem has been helpful, and um, I'm going to post some more soon.